Uh, I'm really excited for today's badge work, um, Senior Badge Room Makeover. Uh, my name is Lauren Pace and I work for Girl Scouts of South Carolina, Mountains to Midlands. And as a part of collaboration with uh, Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina, we are presenting Girl Scouts Connected. And um, on this uh, badge, we're gonna be working on three different um, activities. Uh, three steps and then you'll have two steps to do on your own um, and so we're going to get into it. Did anybody um, have any questions about the um, badge at the moment? Any of the supplies? Any questions about those things? Okay. You can drop any of your um, questions in the chat and it's a small group um, so we'll probably unmute you once we start getting into discussion. Okay. So today we're working on room makeover and um, our badge requirements uh, for the whole badge are step one, gather ideas and inspiration. Step two, paint something. Step three, sew or glue something. Step four, redo something. And step five, build something. So we're gonna work on, um, oh, the purpose of the badge. When we've earned this badge, we will know how to do a fast, fun, and thrifty room makeover, okay? So our activities for today are, uh, we're gonna gather ideas and inspiration, we're gonna paint something, and we're gonna sew or glue something. So that one is um, gonna be a little interesting. Um, I'm not a great sewer, uh, so I've kind of made a, um, you know, kind of a modification, uh, but it'll be awesome once we get through it. So room design. Uh, so there are seven elements of interior design, okay? And there's space, line, form, light, color, texture, and pattern. Can everybody see the, uh, the gray room? It looks like a living room. It's a digital picture. Can everybody see that? Give me a thumbs up. Yeah, all right. So this is a digital picture, of course. Someone's constructed it and they were putting together some ideas. There's a couple apps out there that'll let you do this. Um, so if you're looking to room design, uh, make over your room, you can put the door exactly, you can put the windows exactly where um, they are in your room, and then you can add elements. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is space. So this is obviously a living room, dining room, and uh, they have a big wide open space, of course. Um, you can see the TV and the chair in the corner in the dining room. So they've left a lot of empty space in the center. Now, um, you can see also that they, they have used pretty uh, straight lines. So their couch is straight in a uh, 90 degree, but their dining room table is, you know, uh, straight with it as well. But then on the opposite side of the room, they've decided to make things in kind of a corner. So they've used two different lines to break up the room. Now, this living room, I just have to say, is a little boring. I mean, they made it gray and black and dark, um, and there's no windows, so the light is kind of low, um, but they have added lamps and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. Oh, there might be one window right behind the TV. But overall, um, they're not using their light very well, or so I, uh, so I feel. Hey, Lauren, yep. the, the, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know if there's a different color uh, screen that you're doing, but we're on the step one gather inspiration. It has a lot of light and color. It should be gray. No. What is it? <laughs> it, uh, it has the uh, chevron rug and the white oh. couch. Oh, no. <laughs> going out of order. Is this the feng shui now? No. It's still that same one. Oh, it's probably sharing the wrong screen. It is sharing the share. I was on the wrong <laughs> screen. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So sorry. Back up. So this is the actual living room I was talking about with the, the chair and then the dining room. They're kind of in line. And then uh, the couch in the dining room, 
and then they've placed the chair and the TV kind of awkwardly in, our, uh, in a different angle. Um, and then this light uh, is only, there's only one window or so I can see behind the TV. And so I don't feel like they're using their light well enough. Also, I just said, it's, it's a little boring. It's a lot of gray, a lot of dark colors. And in a living room, um, personally, I want it to be bright. Okay, like the other one. <laughs> you guys got a sneak peek. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is color. So who's heard of Feng Shui? Anybody? Give us a yes or no, or uh, you can use your uh, little keys on the side, yes or no. Yes, Rebecca. No, Kathy, okay. No, Elliot, yes, Taylor. So it's about 50-50, kind of. So Feng Shui, um, I don't know enough about it, but I think it's really interesting how, um, I believe it's, um, it's an Asian culture um, that uses the art of placing uh, elements in your room to better the energy, to better the flow. They look at all of the ways that you can walk around the room and sit in the room um, to make it feel, you know, just in the best way possible. They also use color. So um, red acts as a stimulator. Of course, we know this. We look at red and we're like, jazzed up and ready to go. Um, if we're looking at, say, gray, like that living room, um, it invites helpfulness and represents harmonious union. So I guess they could feel like they really wanted it to feel harmonious. Now, what is your favorite color and what is it, is it true um, what this, uh, well, at least this graphic, is it true what it says about your favorite color? So my favorite color is purple. So give us a chat on um, if it, if it really resonates with you. Kathy, you like purple too? So Kathy, are you, uh, in, does it inspire spirituality, adventure, or prosperity? You think so? I love a good adventure, so I feel like purple really goes for me. Uh, what about Lori? Oh, blue-green. Blue and green uh, represents youth, which is all of you, uh, new beginnings, and inspires confidence. So do you feel, Lori, that uh, blue-green uh, makes you confident? Evelyn says, yes, it's true. Elliot says, I like orange, and I agree that it's uplifting and happy. That's awesome. Yeah, so... Taylor likes yellow, let's see, symbolizes power, uh, stimulates health, patience, and wisdom. So Taylor is very wise. Also peachy orange, uplifting. It's like the best of both. Peachy orange is, goes a little bit with yellow. Um, so we're happy and we're powerful. Um, that's how I feel too. So um, I recently redid some stuff on my uh, garden porch and I've made it like all yellow and when I walk out I just feel like super happy so um, I love yellow too. All right so the next thing we're going to talk about is texture. Let me see. Oop, there we go. So this picture has a lot of texture. I think this is a wallpaper but a lot of people are now doing paints where you use say like a sponge or um, something else to print on the wall. Um, a lot of people are also putting glitter on their walls, which is fabulous. Um, but it, it breaks up the room and it gives it a lot of motion. You love that wall, Evelyn? Awesome. Yeah, you could do something like this. You put a base coat down and then you use, I mean, some people use crumpled up um, brown paper, uh, like newspaper, um, and they like splot it on the wall. Uh, so it gives it come some motion. So this is a texture. You can also see a lot of textures in different um, fabrics, right? So you can have a super fuzzy um, rug or like a very sleek rug, and it can uh, kind of tie your room in together. Now our last one is talking about patterns. So this is the first one you saw, so some of you got a sneak peek. But um, 
they've used the pattern and the colors of the rug to tie in everything else. So the chairs, um, the pillows, and those are all small things that come together. The wall in the background is orange. Um, and this living room is super bright. So, you know, it's like the, it's fun. Um, but it's a lot of different things. So sometimes it can be overwhelming too. So do we agree or disagree that this is uh, our, do we like this? Do we like this uh, picture? Would you live here is the better question. Yeah. I like it. I, a lot of you said yes. So everybody seems to like it. I don't know if I'm feeling the chairs though. They're a little weird. They might be super soft though. When you get sit down, it might be pretty squishy. Um, but I don't know, they look a little weird. Um, but I love the colors of the chairs. All right, so we need to gather inspiration. So hopefully this works. And are you guys seeing the Pinterest now? Okay, so how many of you have a Pinterest or used Pinterest before? Yeah? So I use Pinterest all the time. So when I was thinking about redoing my garden, I went and I started a garden inspiration board. And then when I was doing this, I was thinking, oh, I need to room makeover. And so I found a bunch of ideas that I thought were, you know, awesome. So um, Pinterest is a great way to go to, for like inspiration. Okay. Um, so definitely if you're trying, if you're going to really make over your room, uh, take a look there for, and you can put in code words like uh, orange girl makeover or orange nature makeover, um, room makeover, and it'll bring up a ton of things. Okay. So our next activity, is everybody seeing the seven rooms? All right. So take a look at these, take a hard look at them real quick. So the first one, that's a chalk wall. Um, and she's, you know, an artist and that's amazing. The second room is a tapestry, but she's placed it in the corner and she has lights and it's very muted. So it's gray, that baby pink. Um, number three is very bright and vibrant, girl power. She's got lots of different lights, a lot of different elements. Um, number four, I'm in love with sunflowers. So there's two sunflower picks. Um, that's a tapestry, but she's put it on the ceiling. Of course, lights. She has a fuzzy textured blanket. Um, room number five, she has a little bit of everything. She has a picture wall, she has chalk, she has a tapestry, and then she has a very basic um, um, bedspread. Number six, she has painted the ceiling, which your parents may or may not allow, uh, but I think it's pretty rad because um, I had never really seen it before. Um, and then number seven is very bohemian. They have a huge picture wall. Um, the bed is more so on the ground, lots of pictures, lots of different rugs. So um, Danielle, would you please start our poll? Oh, is Danielle here? Oh, she's got it. Hey, Danielle. Is it up? Can you, can you ladies see the poll? It's just one question. So it should be pick your top three. I already gave away my answer. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna count down to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, Danielle, can you share um, what our favorites are? Can you see that? I cannot. 
Can you guys? Oh, okay. Daniel, you gotta have to, you're gonna have to tell me. <laughs> so number one um, received a 29%. Nice. Number two received 29%. Three, four, five received 29%. Six received 43% and seven received 86%. Oh my gosh. So everybody loves seven, like almost number one. That's awesome. Um, and then it was kind of a tie on those other ones. Uh, number six is really nice too, because it's got two pops of color, but it's unexpected. Um, so definitely if you're thinking about number seven, uh, it'd be pretty easy to put together. All right, so if you want to close that one, I'm going to move to the next one. All right, so the next thing we're talking about is light. So I found these and I love getting discount Christmas lights or um, any of the holidays. They now have like purple ones and orange ones and Halloween. Um, and so these are all white lights, but um, let's pick our one favorite. For these and they and I know three and four are a little similar but three is very straight um, and four is kind of slo uh, slopey um, so pick your one favorite so Danielle would you start the poll yeah give me just a second no worries All right, everyone see the poll? All right, so you gotta pick one favorite this time. Now number five was the last one I found and I thought it was pretty ingenious because it's actually like um, a curtain rod but it's put in the middle of the ceiling and then they tied it back and I just thought it was really cool. All right, there's only a few of us, so hopefully they're all in. Uh, we'll say five, four, three, two, one. Danielle, what's our uh, verdict? Which one is our favorite? Number five, with 50%. Uh, what was our second favorite? It was a tie between one and two. Awesome, yeah. So I think those are really cool, stringing it back and forth, and then you don't even need really a lamp. You can just plug it in. Uh, you can also, um, I found a wonderful new kind of, it's new to me, you can get a timer um, and put your lights on a timer. And so if you want to plug it in and set it for an hour and then you go to sleep and it turns off, which is amazing to me. So um, I've lived on this earth how long without knowing there's timers. All right, so our last one. Now, these are some elements that you can add to your room. Um, so the first one, of course, is an old chair. They painted and they've wrapped tw uh, twine around to make different levels. Number two, they've taken those paint chips um, from the hardware store and they've taken all these different kinds and they stuck them on their wall. Number three, they've gotten some cheap kind of vines from the Dollar Tree or someplace and they've strung it behind. And I think there's actually lights in there too. Uh, number four, they've created a, um, they've created a, uh, like a, a yarn. They've braided it and they've put, um, I guess, yarn in different ribbons. I've seen them with a bunch of different ribbons. Five, um, flowers around your mirror. Six, they've taken the cube and they've made it an interesting color because usually they only sell them in black, white, and gray. Um, Number seven is those party uh, garlands um, that you can get from like Target and the Dollar Tree and stuff. Number eight is also a garland, but they've made that and it's actually made out of fabric. So they've cut little circles and they've, you know, glued or sewn circles around. Number nine is um, a guitar case that they've repurposed. Oh, it's okay, Taylor. Uh, we're only, we're almost at the end of step one. So you, you still have step two and three to go. And then 10, they've taken giant, or they've taken um, beautiful paper. Um, Taylor, make sure you add yourself in the audio. So at the bottom, you should see uh, a audio button. 
Um, and then 10, they've cut out big circles and they've placed them on the wall in interesting ways. So Miss Danielle, would you please start our last poll? And uh, the last poll is three of them that you hate. So we're kind of changing it up. Which three do you absolutely would never ever do? Can everyone see the poll? Can you guys? Did you see the poll? Give me a thumbs up. All right. Can you see it? Cool. All right. So which three? So guitar cases are kind of hard to come by, but they are pretty awesome. You can't see it. Um, is it, Danielle, is it live? Yes, and I'm getting results. Oh, I don't know, Evelyn. Uh, maybe your poll at the bottom. Um, maybe your poll is collapsed. Maybe you might need to maximize it. I don't, I can't see it either. So I'm not too much help. I'm sorry. All right. Let me see. 80% have voted. 80%, okay. <clears throat> well, you can you can chat, Evelyn, which three you hate. Just give us numbers. We will read yours out. We'll see if you agree with the others. So we'll give it 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, Danielle, Miss Danielle, what is our result? So the 63%, number one. We hate it, okay. Number 50%, uh, number 10. Okay. And then three, four, six. I'm sorry, the seven is 38%. Number six is thirty-eight percent, and then three, four, six, eight, and nine all have twenty-five percent, and then two and five have thirteen percent. All right. So we all have a lot of different tastes. Um, Taylor, if you're just joining us, we're talking about elements to a room. Um, so these are cheap or um, you know kind of innovative ways to spice up your room, um, especially some people already have certain things already um, at their house or like number two, the paint squares from the hardware store, those are free. Um, or you can get like an old um, stool from like a, a yard sale whenever we start doing yard sales again, um, and then you can redo it. Uh, but we've overall, we don't like number 10. And I think it's because it's the, it's kind of boring. I mean, if you have to add paper wall, uh, wall circles, um, you can also use the paint samples as gift labels. Awesome. Yeah. So those are innovative ways to use things that are pretty, pretty much free. Um, and the vines and the other things, I mean, those are personal preference, I think, depending on the colors that you build, build them from. Um, but yeah, so those are our hates this time. We, okay, so the, what we're going to work on now is step two, paint something, paint an accent to the room. Supplies, a wide wood frame um, or wide photo frame. Assorted acrylic paints, assorted paint brushes, and water for rinsing. I know I didn't say that part before. I'm sorry. So we're going to talk about it, but we won't have time to like finish finish because it takes me a while to get, um, to get inspired. But I have a bag of paints. I have a photo frame. Sorry, this is the other side. Let me. Um, it's kind of scuffed up, and I got it from... I took it apart, so this is, I took the glass out um, because I'm kind of a mess, but I'm going to use this to paint something new and interesting. How many of you have seen that new trend of like painting water bottles or uh, phone cases? They're awesome, right? I wish I was that talented. I'm going to stick to photo frames though. So here's our inspiration. 
So this person who's collected all these weird frames, they've made them all different colors and they have some, you know, variation to them. This person has decided to do all different colors with all different patterns, but they all still feel like they belong in the same family. Okay. And now this guy, this last bit, they're doing a cluster, a photo cluster wall, and they've used the same three or four colors, um, but, and they're all in the same family, but they all feel kind of different. They're all different shapes and sizes. Um, and so that's kind of my goal is I'm gonna start making a photo uh, cluster, okay? Uh, did I add one more? So this is what my feeling on here, this is too bright. So I'm gonna make it into a baby yellow. Um, and I'm also gonna put some, uh, maybe some hearts on the sides or maybe some stripes. Um, so I am going to redo this frame. And then when I add it to my wall, everything around it is gonna be yellow because I'm feeling like yellow lately. So. Lauren, can I share something? Yeah. So this is something that I did for my daughters. I found this at a craft store. It was just, it was a black, the letter C for her name, Cassie, and she liked teal. So we paint, I painted it or spray painted it um, black, I mean, uh, teal, so it would match in her room. So kind of going along with the accessories. So you can kind of take and do anything um, in addition to frames, you know, other things as well. Definitely. Thank you, Miss Daniel. Yeah, and that could be right in the middle of her wall. And then after that, she can spread all of her other photos and stuff out and away from it. Um, so right now we're going to talk about, everybody should know about the color wheel, of course, uh, primary, secondary, and complementary colors. And then also you have warm colors and cool colors. So everybody go ahead for... Um, I'm going to unmute everybody. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to stop share. So hello. I'm going to unmute everybody. And we are going to talk about our ideas for this. Let me figure out how to unmute everybody. Unmute all. Hello. So why don't we go down the line and talk about what we might uh, do with our picture frames. Um, Whomever wants to start. Um, I guess I'll go first. I don't know whoever wants to go. So Evelyn, is that Evelyn? No, who was that? <laughs> I think that was me. Oh, hey, sorry. So what are you gonna do, Kathy? Um, well, my room is like mostly like light pink and white with like a hint of gold. So I might like turn it into like a white with like pink inside of it. Nice. Awesome. And are you going to start making like a cluster wall or do you already have some sort of cluster wall with like a lot of photos on it or a lot of things you're trying to save? I have like a thing of trophies, like ribbons and stuff that I've earned. Awesome. So all your accomplishments right there as people walk in, you're like, man, I'm awesome. That's cool. But I see your walls around you. What color uh, are your walls? Is that tan? Yeah, my, my walls are like kind of tan, but I want to like redecorate the walls. That would be awesome for one of your other steps is to, you know, ask your mom about painting the walls. Maybe do one wall, um, a, you know, Tomorrow. and then, um, Can I my walls sometimes? So, yeah. Like, I don't know. My mom about about like painting the wall. That would be cool. And hey, guess what? You have time right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Elliot, do you know what you're gonna do? I'm not really sure yet. Not sure yet? Yeah, it takes me a while to feel inspired. Um, I, have, I have a picture of my camp friends that I'm gonna put in here, but I'm gonna um, probably make, make some hearts because I love hearts. What do you... Um, are you thinking about redoing your room or some sort of like uh, help your parents with a living room or something like that? Um, not really, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Do you have a lot of stuff on your walls right now? 
Um, I have a few wall stickers. Oh, but not really much else. Wall stickers. That's a good option. Um, Evelyn, I see your super cute cat. Uh, <laughs> are you going to do a photo frame? Um, I'm going to try. I share a room with my older sisters, so sometimes it's a little difficult to do that, but yeah, I'll, I'm going to try doing it. Oh, I understand. Right now, it looks like your walls are, um, I don't know if that's your room room, but it looks like they're yellow. Yeah, this isn't my room, thankfully. I don't like the colors. <laughs> okay. And um, is it Ariana or Ariana? Ariana. Ariana. It looks like, are you in a living room or is that your room with the red? I'm in the kitchen. Kitchen, okay. So what are your colors and what are you thinking about redoing? Or painting? Okay, so I, um, I just recently redid my room with my family. So it's actually aqua and like gray and whites and pinks. Awesome. So I'm going to do an aqua photo frame. Awesome. And do you have a lot of stuff on the walls or do you kind of keep it like the bed and stuff like that? That's the colors. and. The We've got a lot of stuff on the walls, like paintings and pictures. Awesome. And there's Lori. Hey, Lori. Uh, what are you thinking about painting today? Um, my frame is a teal blue. I actually really like the color of it, but I might do some complementary um, colors to it, it's and give it some um, little dots or little designs on it. Polka dots, that's very popular, um, you know, to add a little bit of a depth to it. Uh, is your room, you said your room is teal? Um, no, my frame, the picture frame teal. My room is actually a um, baby yellow. Baby yellow. Those will look good together. Um, do you have a lot of elements that tie all into the baby yellow, or is it kind of mismatched? My room is very pastel colors. Awesome. Oh. And then Era? Are you on the line with us? No, oh, ma'am. Hey, um, what are you going to be painting today? Well, I'm not painting today. Are you thinking about redoing a room? Say something. Um, leave. I know what color green. That's green. Green? That's cool. Um, Taylor, are you going to be painting something today? Oh, Taylor, can you hear us? Oh, maybe not. All right. So when you get started on this, um, make sure that, um, you know, of course you have it where it's not going to get hit or uh, so it can dry properly. Uh, you could also put a clear coat on top. You can find one of those at like Walmart um, so that it'll stay really nice for you. Um, so we don't really have enough time to get started on this, but it's, you know, it's the thought that you'll have enough time today to do it. So our next thing we're going to work on, so I'm going to mute you all again so that we can watch the video. Okay. All right. So... Let me get back to, okay, here we go. And so step two, sew or glue something. Um, so you'll need a pillow cover uh, or you could make a pillow cover or a duvet cover, uh, supplies, an old t-shirt, pillow stuffing or batting and scissors. So I'm not a great sewer, so um, we're kind of doing a small cheat on this one, but that's okay because not everybody has a sewing machine and not everybody wants to sew by hand. Um, but we're going to watch this video of how to make this. And some of you probably have already made a um, no sew blanket before. Give me a, a hands up or a chat. Yes, you've made it. So you already have a good idea. So we're going to... Is the uh, music playing too? Oh, okay, all right. So I'm gonna turn the music down a little bit because it's a little too much.
my bed. Okay, so with this, um, I am just going to be making, um, I'm gonna be using a basic shirt, and this is an old shirt, because it's my first one, so I'm gonna practice. But I'm gonna cut the top here and down the sides. Um, I am a Clemson fan. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, make the, the strips. And now I like to use a square knot because then it lays flat. Um, I might also do it inside out, tie the knots to three sides, flip it inside out, and then all of my knots will be on the inside so it won't look all shaggy. Um, and then I have, now you can use a pillow like they just showed, or I have the fluffy, so I'm gonna stuff my own, because um, this is what I had laying around. So, do you guys have a shirt that you wanna show off that you're gonna make into a pillow? We got a tiger. Is that an old team shirt, Kathy? Yeah. Evelyn, do you have one? You thinking about it? No. Elliot, do you have one you think you might make? Yeah? Okay. Now this can be, uh, you can go to, say you make this one and it's not your favorite because it's your first one and it's an old shirt. You could go to a thrift store and find a colored shirt that um, really like will make your room pop. Um, like say an old like Hawaiian shirt or something like that. And you could make it out of that and then it could be a new pillow for your room. Um, and so this is what it'll look like when you get started. So you keep it on a flat surface you'll cut all the way around it and then um, make sure you cut the squares out of each top and bottom corner so that it'll uh, make your pillow a nice tight square. Are there any questions about the pillow? I know we haven't done any yet, but um, right now you can get started on your frame and stuff. Any questions? Let me see my chat. I can't find my chat. Okay. Ooh, there's the chat. Okay. Um, this will be recorded and it'll be uploaded to both web pages. Just so people know, Taylor P doesn't have a microphone. Oh, I'm so sorry, Taylor P. Um, I'll be sending you a follow-up email. Yep. I'm currently sewing masks. That is awesome, Taylor. That is so cool. Thank you for doing a service. Uh, a lot of people need those right now. So let's talk about our last steps. So next steps, step four, redo something. Refurbish, repurpose, repair, refinish, reupholster. Um, take something you already have and make it new. Some examples, dye or tie-dye a curtain or bedspread a different color. Painting a chalkboard or dry erase paint on a door or dresser top for family memos. So my mom did that. She put it on the pantry door. She painted it and then we have chalk and so we can write each other notes or the grocery list. Um, so I don't know if that's something you can do in your own home, but like that one girl did, she put it on her wall and then she got to draw on her wall. Um, my sister also did that in her room so that she could draw on her wall. Um, update an old dresser with paint and new drawer pulls. Um, so my, one of my favorite things in a trend, uh, I guess, is like splatter paint. And I don't know if that's something you can do, but I would love to have some sort of element where I could splatter paint all of my, like a canvas and then maybe a dresser or a chair or something like that. Um, it, it would look pretty funky. And then step five, you gotta build something. So bring some flair to a room with an object that wasn't there before. Some examples, build something out of wood or metal. So like a table. Build something from found items. Um, I mean, there's so many things you can make. Build an art piece. If you'd like to bring some nature inside, use this step to build something for a plant or flowers. Think hanging plants, floating water, or sorry, sorry, floating flower or wooden or metal sculpture that incorporates a planter. So even some flower boxes would be awesome. Um, so you gotta build something. Now that might take some equipment, uh, some tools, um, 
and not everybody has that. So it might be something that you have to push off until another time. Um, but definitely you could do that um, sometime in the future. So yeah, so all of this is going to be recorded. It is recorded and we will be posting it online. If you have any questions, please drop a comment. And I hope you've been inspired to do something fabulous to your room while you have a bunch of time. Um, my suggestion would be to go on Pinterest and be like, I really love that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get some old lights uh, or some Christmas lights. I'm going to decorate, um, you know, and then from there you'll have a fa fabulous room uh, to hang out in while you're kind of waiting for all this to pass. So thank you for joining us today and I'll be sending out um, a follow up and I'll include the links to the video. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.